guess we'll call the meeting to order. It is 5.38 p.m. Um, I guess we'll stand and recite the Pledge of Allegiance as we do with any and all of our meetings. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. So off to I guess we'll do roll call. Would you like to do roll call, ma'am? Okay. Guillermo Garcia. Dr. Oscar Bustion. Present. Okay. Lisa Paul. Present. Silvio Bruni. Alfonso de la Garza. Present. Dr. James Cortez. Present. Sandra Ochoa Taylor. Present. Okay. We have a quorum. Okay. <clears throat> Would any of you like to motion to, for, or I guess first we'll ask for general citizens' uh, comments. Anyone yes. here to uh, make a citizen's comment has three minutes to make their and three minutes to, 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 to comment on this agenda. As Amanda Sosa, Father Bailey. So we were going to present uh, for purposes of, of the readings. Okay, so then it wouldn't be, yes. So th th that would be more for Roman numeral four. Okay, the actual, oh, okay. the actual hearing. So it doesn't look like there's anyone present for public comments. Can we move on to the next thing? Excellent. All right. Approval of the minutes. One of you all motion to approve the minutes. I, if you I'm ready to. Okay. I second. second. Yeah, there you go. All in favor? Say aye. 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 Minutes approved. Now, why we're all here, Roman numeral four, discussion with possible action on the following. The appointment of a chairperson who wishes to nominate one of their colleagues as the chairperson. <laughs> I nominate Lisa Paul. Does Miss Paul accept the nomination? Uh, for purposes of this meeting, I'll, I'll accept it. For yeah, on a, I'll, that's just for the purposes of this meeting, correct? No, or is it is it to a point? Oh, it's for the, okay for the whole thing. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, I'll accept. You'll accept. Okay, is there a second? unless there's another nomination. Is there another one? Is there a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Congratulations, Miss Paul. <laughs> All right. Now um, we also have to have a vice chairperson. Is there any nominations for a vice chairperson? I nominate Buitron. Mr. Buitron, do you accept the nomination? Yes, I do. Excellent. So second. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Congratulations, Mr. Buitron. Vice Chair, tested. Okay, off to B. It's discussion with possible action on the ethics complaint submitted to the city attorney's office by Amanda Lizette Sosa Paredes and Daniel Luis Paredes in regards to possible violations of sections 2.01b, section 2.014, section 2.015, section 2.018a1 or a2, and section 2.019 of the ethics code by David J. Paredes. So, um, uh, sorry, one question. Uh, before we get started, would it be appropriate to, to um, if there was a motion um, to convene in closed session to get um, legal advice from the first assistant regarding, um, uh, I guess, you know, issues related, um, legal issues or get legal counsel regarding this before we hear the complaint so that we may get legal counsel? Um, regarding the rules and ask any questions about how the rules, you know, would apply. If that is your motion, is there a second? Second. All, yeah. All those in favor? Yes, I am a great idea. For the record, the motion is to uh, convene in for executive session to discuss uh, certain legal procedures and matters on this issue, correct? Right, pursuant to um, the Texas Government Code section 551.071 to seek legal counsel. 
Okay, that sounds fine. Let's, let's reconvene. Okay, um, the time is 554 um, and we are back in session and if we could let the record reflect that we um, left uh, to go into executive session at 543. I'm sorry I'm new so I forgot to announce the time. So we are back on the record and so uh, we may proceed. Um, Okay, so, um, and I believe you had already called the item, right? Yes, I had already already called the item. So um, now that I've now, now that we've called the item, we can allow um, public comment on this on this agenda item, where the individual will be limited to three minutes, unless one of uh, the commissioners is allowed to grant an additional three minutes per per commissioner. So he would have a grand total of 15 minutes. Uh, how many minutes? 15. 15 minutes. Okay. If you all were to give all of your time. Yeah. Okay. So. May I approach? Yes. <clears throat> so uh, my name is George Altgilt. I'm, I'm representing um, uh, Luis Perez and his wife uh, Amanda Perez. They co-own this uh, business together. Um, and uh, Miss, Mrs. Paredes would also like to address you all. So if you um, were considering rationing your time, uh, please keep in mind that she too would like to tell uh, um, her, her piece as it relates to this incident. Uh, in the interest of time, I'm gonna try to be um, quick, but I do want to also be uh, thorough in order to respect the process and frankly the the gravity of the situation. So our complaint, uh, the basis of our complaint is uh, a internal city of Laredo human resources investigation. And in that investigation, they determined that the city cemeteries uh, director, supervisor, uh, David Paredes was utilizing his official position for personal gain. And he, also, he owned a monument company. My clients own a monument company. They're direct competitors. And um, if you dealt with uh, his company, you got preferential treatment, uh, usually meaning that your tombstone could be installed within 30 days. If you, anybody else had to get you know, 120 days out minimum, you know, basically what he was designing was a scheme where you were funneled directly to him. And he was using his office there at the cemetery to uh, you know, snipe uh, uh, bereaved um, families. You know, they were coming in in these very, um, frankly, uh, fragile you know, situations, the loss of a loved one, and uh, he was um, talking about city plots that you could acquire, and oh, by the way, you know, call this monument company. And he was thinly disguising the monument company as being owned by some other company and that it wasn't his. But thankfully, due to the um, diligence of um, your city's uh, HR department, and their thorough investigation, uh, they were able to drill down and uh, discover what a ruse that that in fact was. Um, it was a ruse. And um, what they also discovered, and, I'm, and I'm, I'm primarily my uh, client's complaint is the entirety of um, uh, the uh, internal investigation uh, performed um, uh, by Ms. Zulema Ortiz. Uh, Ms. Teniente participated in it, she signed off on it. <clears throat> and Ms. Daniela Vera as well participated in the investigation. And, and ultimately, um, uh, there's two Paredes, right? My client Paredes, Luis Paredes, and then there's uh, his, uh, interestingly, um, his uncle, uh, David Paredes, uh, who is this uh, antagonist in this story, if you will. Uh, um, David, I'm going to use him by his first name so we don't confuse uh, David for Luis. David uh, ends up, um, uh, even after we filed our, com our complaint, 
ends up keeping his job and business as usual, no problem, for months and months and months and months and months. Remember, we, we filed this. My client brought forward her complaint in September of 2023. Uh, during the investigation, he was called in. He was interviewed, as were other workers there, as was his uh, administrative assistant, as was, um, not, though not listed, you know, uh, his, his department director that he answered to. And it was determined um, that, in fact, he was using his official position for personal gain. Recommendations were made by uh, Ms. Ortiz that, uh, and I'm going to quote here from the report, uh, our final recommendation is for the immediate termination of David Paredes for violating the municipal city service rules and regulations and the code of ethics policy indicated below. And she, she lists them all on page seven. I'm not going to eat up my time. Uh, but basically, uh, misconduct in the workplace, um, uh, uh, having outside employment that interferes with the employee's work performance, uh, performing outside employment on city time, and it, it then, you know, uh, to my client's credit, you know, she submitted several open records requests to uh, help the city, assist the city in an investigation that, frankly, they should have just been doing all on their own, but, you know, being, being, uh, the fierce competitor that, that my client is, but competing for a level playing field, not competing for some sort of special treatment. But in her open records request, um, uh, it's discovered several purchase orders, uh, three, two, I'm sorry, three, five, six, four, five, four in particular, uh, which is the purchase of uh, monuments, wherein the city of Laredo uh, paid to Laredo Monument. Um, one purchase was uh, $45,000. Another one, um, uh, that was for a guardian angel. Another one for $49,000. Now, what's significant about those numbers? Yeah, it's a lot of money, but it's also right underneath that $50,000 benchmark where you need to go out for competitive bidding, bidding, right? So if you come in under 50, the uh, purchasing department, whose director, interestingly, is no longer with the city, um, and uh, and uh, the supervisor, the, the director of the department, uh, can just sign off on it. And so you've got these just, you know, you know $17,500. You know, this was at the time of the filing of, um, of the original complaint. So, you know, big ticket items. Uh, and this is just some of them. I'm, I'm not going to – these are just the relevant ones at the time of the city's own internal HR um, uh, report. Which, by the way, has a has a date of October sixteenth. To the city's credit, and I'm one of the biggest critics of the city. Uh, I'm so sorry, your, your three minutes is up. Is there anyone that would like to yield more time to Mr. Altfield? I'll yield my time to Mr. Altfield. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, to to the to the city's credit, the, so the complaint gets filed September twenty third. This this um, uh, investigation is wrapped up by October sixteenth. I mean, they grab it, they turn it around, and it's been sitting. Uh, in the you know city manager's third floor somewhere you know west wing for quite some time, uh, and it and 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 I get it. Part of it you know we're, we're you know we're just now here today to discuss this right. Uh, if we want to, to uh, and that's partly on me. I, I there were some scheduling conflicts. I mean to be fair, but uh, the um, it it wasn't until just recently that this um, case gets docketed for your review that. Um, uh, David Paredes uh, ultimately resigns uh, from, from the city. Um, I've been told, uh, and, and you know, we don't need to start patting ourselves on the back just yet, but he was replaced by a Mr. Saavedra, who apparently is, is really doing a good job going out of his way, to make sure there, aren't, there isn't any you know, um, uh, you know, malfeasance happening there. But uh, there was a competitive bid that went out for uh, some monuments, and my client bid on those, uh, and bid extra super low, just to like, you know, just to see if she could get her foot in the door, and of course, we didn't win that bid, uh, Laredo Monument, um, David Paredes won that bid. So he's still in business uh, with the city, mind you. Um, and, and, and I wanted to mention that, you know, this has sat, for, for this, this investigation has sat on the west wing of the third floor since October 
of 2023, and um, not much was done. Uh, it, it, and, and, and that, I mean, I think um, that should be concerning for all of us. The other thing that uh, Ms. Uh, Sulema Ortiz recommended, quote, we are recommending that this investigation be forwarded to a local law enforcement agency for an investigation of any possible criminal offenses associated. Uh, and to the best of our knowledge, um, that has not uh, occurred. And, and uh, if, when, you, when you go through the amount of evidence that was uh, provided to her and that she reviewed in her uh, determination, um, you know, mo uh, so, so my client, her husband were interviewed. Um, Mr. David Paredes' former uh, employee, uh, Alberto Be Beto Guzman was interviewed, and he, he was like, yeah, I mean, I worked for him for years leading up to this complaint, and he at all times was present on city cemetery property wearing his city cemetery shirt while on duty giving me directives uh, as it related to the execution of matters relating to his private personal company. And, um, and so uh, Ms. Ortiz took that into consideration and then she in interviewed uh, city cemetery building maintenance worker, Hector Balderas, uh, Jose Monroy, uh, who's a groundskeeper, uh, another uh, Diana Gomez, who's the right hand of uh, David Paredes, the, the supervisor, um, interviewed, of course, David Paredes, who's notably not present today. Um, I just. For the record, I'd like to point that out. He's not here to answer. Uh, maybe he'll come uh, if this, you know, at, at the, the next hearing. But also, um, the, Tanya Herrera, the purchasing buyer uh, for the city as well. Um, and so, um, originally, my client reached out to Assistant City Manager Steve Landin with this report of, of you know, a conflict of interest. The investigation uh, ensued. Pictures of text messages between. Uh, David and his former employer employee, Mr. Guzman, audio recordings, uh, GPS um, of city of Laredo trucks that would leave the city cemetery, go to his uh, Laredo Monument Company. Uh, I mean, Miss Ortiz, uh, I mean, God bless her. To come forward, and this isn't the only, this isn't the first time she's come forward. She's come forward on other matters uh, where, uh, just in case you, her name pops up again, I want to say that she's one of my heroes because so few people in the city ever come forward and speak up, and she does. She's one of them. She doesn't. She's like fire me. I she, she was here right here one time. I saw her myself challenging city council to fire her because the woman has got a brass set of ovaries that are to be envied, and so. She came forward and she delivered again on this case. And uh, in spite of them telling her like, hey, don't come forward. To get this report, the Herculean efforts, uh, you would think a simple open records request would get it. I mean, I had to, I mean, yeah, I mean whatever. I'm a former city council member. I'm, I'm, I'm nobody, right? I'm nobody. Uh, but I went and went, yeah, from 2016 to 2020, I served a four year sentence here working for the city. Um, and so, I mean, and I had to like really dig, I finally got it. I finally got it. Something that should be, like the public should be made aware of. Like, hey, like we're, we've identified a problem at the city uh, cemetery. We're addressing it. We're being proactive. We're firing this guy. No, it was swept and swept and swept under the rug. And so, um, by the way, looking around at the faces here today, um, it's a very different uh, ethics commission. It, there's like a little bitty ray of light kind of poking through. Uh, and, and so, you know, kudos to y'all for stepping forward because it's a pretty thankless job. But anyway, I mention that because uh, uh, Ms. Ortiz is uh, a um, unsung hero here at the city of Laredo. Um, and so that, that, being, that being said, um, I, 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 uh, I, I believe there is enough evidence for uh, this case to go forward. I don't know if you've already made that determination or not. Okay, so I, I, I would submit to you that under tab three, if you if you dig through, uh, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, uh, they're not they're not numbered, um, but they're back to back. But if you got to page eight and page nine, 
is the beginning of uh, Sulema's um, uh, report. This is the city's own internal HR report and that um, uh, you can pretty much read that there and uh, very easily arrive at a conclusion that there is more than enough evidence uh, to go forward um, uh, for, to, for us to go and, and have our, um, our full hearing. Um, but, you know, I'm just a suit, right? I mean, I'm, I'm a, you know, I get, I get, I get, uh, this is my job. This is, this is what I do, right? I get to, I get to, you know, make my client's case. But the most, I think the most compelling information aside from Sulema's report uh, would be uh, for me to take a seat and for you all to please uh, indulge uh, Ms. Perez and, and what does this mean to a small business owner? Like, what does this mean to a teacher who, you know, several years into a meaningful career, uh, she and her husband decide, you know what, let's, why don't you hang up your spurs there at LISD and let's go into business together. Like, we can make a difference. So we can try, you know, we got kids, she's got, a, uh, her daughter's graduating from, from, from St. Mary's. I mean, they got tuition bills. Like, let's, Let's give it a go, right? We're going to put all we're going to put it all on red, and then to meet this brick wall of a city that's not open for business for everyone. It's only open for business for a certain few, right? And that's got to change at some point in time. I mean, this isn't communist China where you have to be a member of the you know their version of the Patron Party to get your foot in the door. Like you should just be able to hang a shingle, invest and realize a return on your uh, dream. And um, who better to plead that case than uh, Ms. Paredes? Good evening, for the record, my name is Amanda Sosa Paredes. Um, thank you for hearing this case today. Um, I come here before you because we, I ended up filing my husband and I this ethics complaint um, towards David Paredes, who was um, the city's uh, cemetery supervisor. Um, he is related to my husband. Um, my father-in-law and David Paredes were brothers. Uh, my father-in-law passed away. Um, after that, we had no contact with them um, for several years, um, two years approximately. And um, we decided to open this monument business. Um, I got out of teaching and um, everything was fine at the beginning. And until we started um, noticing that um, our foundation, so before we set a monument, there has to be a cement foundation that the city cemetery places. Um, they weren't being placed. Um, uh, we would, the, the families would come and say, you know what, Ms. Paredes, like they're, what's happening with my um, foundation, can you call the cemetery and find out why our uh, foundations are not being placed? Everybody that has passed around us has gotten their foundation um, except for us. So we would go out there, check it out, and yeah, um, they were all Laredo monuments, foundations that were being placed. Um, so that's when we started noticing something was off. Um, there was a point where um, during the investigation that um, John Orfila went to the cemetery, um, yeah, the city cemetery. And then um, we had gone in, we saw his truck there, we got out, you know, we didn't want to be on the cemetery grounds. At that time um, we left and um, we find out, well, we started noticing that the uh, cemetery workers, the groundskeepers were not able to talk to us, um, any of them. We would get off to look for a location of a plot and um, they'd scatter, they'd scatter. Like um, we'd say, hi, you know, buenos dias to the workers. Like they'd get their shovel, whatever they had and just leave. So we noticed that was really strange. We didn't know what was happening um, until later we find out that they were told to not speak to us, that they weren't allowed to speak to us at all. Um, it went on for a few months that we couldn't even like ask, get there and ask to, uh, for help um, to locate a plot, um, we had to just figure it out on our own, um, which wasn't the case with Laredo monuments. They would always show up, and of course, um, it's David's sons that would go install, so they would go to their dad, and of course, their dad would show them where the plot was located, so they didn't have trouble like we were having trouble. 
Um, another thing that we started noticing was the customers coming in and they were like, um, they'd open the door and we'd greet them and they're like, um, ustedes instalan en el city cemetery. And we're like, yes. Um, are you sure you all install at the city cemetery? Yes, we're authorized to install um, at the city cemetery. Why? And they're like, um, no, it's because they're telling us that you all cannot install that. It's only Laredo Monument um, or Gloria, but Gloria is taking years to install. So for us to go across the street um, next to Burger King, which they always refer to as next to Burger King. And it was like family after family after family, we started noticing, you know, that this was happening too often. So we were like, we weren't telling the families anything. We were just saying, yes, we're able to install. Like they didn't need to know anything that was happening, you know? Um, so yeah, we started noticing it was just becoming, you know, too, too often it was happening. So, um, I mean, it was just that we, we had to tell the families that yes, we were able to install their, um, we didn't know what to do with the foundations because of course David was the one in charge there. So it's not like I could approach him and say, Hey, what, what's happening with my foundations? Um, and I reached out to Mr. Landin. Um, I reached out to him and I said, you know, um, I need help, you know, this and this is happening. I need you to help me. Um, something has to be done about this. Um, had this man just played it fair, I think everything would have been fine, you know, but, um, he started, plain dirty and that's when I noticed and we and it wasn't only with us I, I want y'all to know for the record um, my husband is friends with um, Gloria's monument the son and they get along well um, we help them they help us also during installations whenever we need assistance um, and he said that David would do the exact same thing to them since he's been here he's like we've always struggled so he's like they don't put our foundations yeah, either. So it was just something that wasn't only happening with us, it was with the other monument company as well. So I, um, Mr. Landin ended up um, saying he would take care of it. Um, I did, you know, communicate with him. There's documentation, there's emails between us. And um, he was like, I'm gonna take care of it. I'm gonna take care of it. And it, time went on and I'm like, nothing's happening. This continues to occur. We were waiting 120 days to get our foundations installed and their families were get were waiting like two weeks and their foundations were set. Like somebody would pass away, they'd wait like two weeks and they had a foundation. And our families had to wait 120 days, four months is what Ms. Gomez was telling all our families um, that they had to wait four months. We also found out that um, there's a lot of work orders that were not submitted, um, our work orders that were not submitted, um, and those work orders are for the permit. So the family goes to the cemetery office, pays the permit, and then there's a work order that is done, that's created um, by the cemetery employees in the office, and um, all of those work orders were being stacked um, in an office. So basically when he left um, the cemetery office, our foundations were placed within a week, two weeks tops by Mr. Santo Segura, which I do want to commend Mr. Santo Segura. He is the cemetery superintendent. Um, and uh, I know he's been there for a while, but he wasn't, by the looks of it, he wasn't allowed to do his job uh, appropriately because David would take over the cemetery. Um, so now that David is gone, he's working well, you know, fairly with everybody. Um, cemetery workers talk to us now when we go, we get there, we'll, buenos dias, you know, like we always do, um, and ask, you know, for just look at the location of the plots they're able to, to lead us to it. So things have changed um, for the better now. Um, but yes, it was just unfair that we had to continue. Uh, Mr. Landin at one point told me there was nothing or that they, they were handling it. Um, but he said, Amanda, we don't have enough evidence. And I said, how is that? I gave you everything I have, like everything that we gave to you all. Um, pretty much I turned into him and um, he's like, just keep sending me anything you have, keep sending me. And I said, this is so unfair. I told my husband, this is so unfair that we have to continue um, doing this like they should already look into the matter we shouldn't have to be playing investigators and trying to get stuff for them like this is enough so um, I mean it's disappointing that it had to come 
to this point, you know, where we had to hire an attorney um, and gather everything, um, all the evidence we had submitted to our, to our attorney when we had already given everything I'm, I'm to sorry, Mr. Landy. If we could just wrap it up, it's been past the time. Okay. Just, 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 I'm sorry. Um, so yes, I just wanted to make you all aware of the issue at hand and why the ethics complaint was filed on our part. Um, it, this was not a frivolous complaint at all. Um, this was something serious that was happening and had, had he not been um, interfering you know, with our company, uh, we would not have been here. Thank you. Can we ask a question, though, uh, regarding, okay. So I just, um, uh, Ms. Sosa, you had um, said something about Mr. Segura. I noticed in uh, attached in the documents that were provided um, to us, there was a statement that uh, Mr. Segura, and, and this is what somebody else said about him, that he would look at all the bids and um, tell David, the respondent in the complaint, who and what the low bid was, and therefore, um, Laredo Monument was able to submit a lower bid. And there was also a statement that although he has since separated from the city, that this is continuing to happen. So is there any allegation that that is continuing to happen, that somebody is communicating through Mr. Segura about what bids are coming in? Um, no. Uh, I can no, not through Mr. Segura because there was a recent bid that Mr. Um, Orfila's office sent out recently and uh, not too long ago and um, it was his secretary um, emailing me at the office saying, hey, um, can you quote us on this? And I said, I responded and I said, um, this is obviously over the $50,000 threshold. Like this should, this should, you should not be getting informal quotes this way. I said, once it's up on the EBIT system, I will gladly, you know, um, bid, submit my bid. So, which is, it, the bid opened like the next day um, on the EBIT system, but um, it was not going through Santo Segura anymore. This one was John Orfila. Okay. Yes. Anybody else have any questions? No. Okay, is there a motion to go into executive session? I so move. Okay, uh, we will retire into executive session. The time is 621 and it will be pursuant to um, the Texas Government Code, section 551.071 to uh, receive counsel uh, from the city attorney's office. Okay, if the record uh, can reflect that um, we have returned uh, from closed session, we are back in open session and the time is 6.29. So is there a motion regarding um, the agenda item? And yes, a motion to accept the complaint filed by Amanda Lizette Sosa Paredes and Luis Daniel Paredes and move forward to evidentiary hearing. I second. Okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, the motion carries, and we will move forward with an evidentiary hearing at a date to be scheduled uh, through the city attorney's office. I know there's some time constraints, so we'll, uh, you, the city attorney's office will take care of that. Okay. All right. There, is there any further business? Okay. Is there a motion to adjourn? I move to adjourn. I'll second the motion. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Okay. Any opposed? Okay, it's 6.30. Let the um, record reflect that uh, we are ending the meeting.